Hello and welcome to another episode of I took off far too much suspension stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, all of it, all of it came off and I've now got to clean it all up and make it look nice. I'm going to make it look nice. Um, so yeah, I'm not fully sure yet whether it's going to go off of powder coating or I'm going to do it myself. I have got a couple of tester pieces sat in some thinners. So if the thinners can take off all of the underseal gunk and then left me with a fairly clean thing to put into our little sandblasting cabinet to get the rust off and then it's just a, cut, a matter of squirting a coat of paint on. Not too bad. I mean I've got to push the bushes out anyway because they're trashed. Um, I guess we're going to start out by thinning out what we do have to do and what we don't have to do. Like the springs, I'm not doing them because I have a replacement lowering kit. And these shock absorbers, they just want throwing in the bin. Look at the state of that. Although, there's still some life left in that. Good old Volvo parts, eh? They might be rotten on the outside, but they're still going. Yeah, the disc brakes, they're getting replaced with new. So if I could just sort out this table and then we're gonna get a leg up here maybe. And uh, that sounds funnier than it is. We'll get a leg up and we'll start disassembling the leg, taking the spring off, having a look to see how clean, how much I need to clean. Yeah, let's get into it. All right, let's start by taking the brake caliper apart. Oh, sorry, off. Oh, that was easy. Do you love it when something actually undoes? I say that, but the whole car's been like, oh, that came off well. Ah, oh, as he says that, there it goes. Still, for brake lines. Well, this is good. Next, caliper bolts. 17, you think? No. 18? No. 19. Yeah. It's really loud, this gun. It does the job. Double, yeah, of course. There we go. All right, caliper off skis. Look, new pads. Nice. Scrap department. Right. right, the bottom ball joint, that's obviously completely trashed. Look at the state of that, it's completely open to the elements. So let's get these undone and get that off. That's not a 10, is it? Is it a 13? No, it's going to be a 12. <laughs> uh, it's been one of them, get all your tools out of the toolbox days. You know, every different spanner size under the sun. Oh, I've got to say, every bolt I take off is still really good condition. Look at that. One minute more using that in your cup for a bottom ball joint. I'm going to guess that this piece I need to save and the ball joint just comes with a new bolt. So I'm not going to put that in the scrap pile, I will put that in the over here keeps pile until I know what's going on. Far so good. 
I don't think we'll take the backing plate off. Uh, although that does look a bit worse for wearing now. I think the new backing plate came with one of them. We will check that. Next, strut top, which will involve spring clamps. Super dodgy old set of uh, spring clamps. Been using them for years though. Haven't died from using them yet. Just it off. Right, I need a big socket to go on there. A deep socket. 24. Yeah. Woo! And nobody died yet. Jesus, did you see that? Try to get me. What was I saying about potential energy, guys? That is now a disaster. And we get another spring clamp, put it on the other side. Anyway, don't play with spring clamps, they're dangerous things. Most of the components are dismantled now. The axle is dismantled, the front struts are dismantled. I didn't kill myself with uh, spring compressors. Uh, <laughs> so, steering rack um, is disgusting. It's disgusting. It's got a very thick layer of goo on it. So we're going to, we're going to take the ends off because we don't want them. We're going to replace them with nice new ones. Chuck it in the cleaning tank, scrub it up nice and clean and it'll be nice and clean. Yeah, so let's go and do that. Nothing. I leave you alone for five minutes and then everything's apart. Yeah. Well, and then the things that you're taking off are apart. It was interesting. Did you I find anything? I had to anything? know how it works. Oh my god. I think the oil pumps from side to side in that bit and it helps and you And it moves steer. the wheels. There we yeah. go. Now you know how it works. Um, I just came to see how things are getting on. Uh, have a little bit of a check in. And yeah, the diff, diff change is going really good. <laughs> Everything fell off. Everything fell off. <laughs> oh my word, we no. have got some goings on, haven't we guys? There is a lot going on. Um, I'll, cancel we, the I'll, I'll cancel the MOT <laughs> yeah. for next week then. Where do we start? I mean... We are only supposed to be taking the diff off. What happened? Well, where do we start? <laughs> diff was welded. Yeah, um, that's, we, where, that's where we were going with that episode. I said, last, I can't reverse park it get it out yeah yeah so that's what we were doing and as we were doing that we noticed the rear bushes were all shot to death they were absolutely wrecked we've got, got, one here. We've got a whole pile of stuff under this table i mean literally the hole underneath the car's come off so look hold look. on so let me go up up this one bush Wow, God, there's no point in putting that back on. No. I don't know if the camera can see that. That's a quality bush. <laughs> I mean, it would have failed its MOT with that. Yeah, it, all of these would have failed their MOTs. The lower arms were just as crappy. Front arms were really crappy. So... We might as well just do it now. I mean, we have got a whole lowering kit as well to put on this. A so whole lowering kit, so... I take it that's going on now. Yeah, so we're... Right. we're We've ripped it all off. We're gonna put all the nice new bushes on. We're not going full poly bush on the Volvo. 
because it's a road car. It's a road car and a, mm. still a family car. This is our family car too, so you know. This those is bushes road. are in there to absorb to absorb the road. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> the road bangs. Yeah, the road bangs. Yeah. <laughs> and um, that's what they're for, so we're going to put them back in. It's not a track car. For a more comfy ride. No, it's not a track um, car. Some of them, parts we've ordered, um, are, are come with poly bushes and we're keeping them because they're not parts that are taking up absorptions. They're, they are the rear keeping it a bit more torque together. rods and uh, the panard. panard rod. Those are having poly bushes in. What were the bushes like on the panard rod? Sure. It's quite important. That's not bad. That one's not bad, but the other one isn't. Yeah, again, look, see, shot. But in fairness to the car, everything I took off, I think, was genuine Volvo. Well, I think it's, the, the thing is, this car's been very well maintained in its life. I've got the history file for it. It's thick. It is. And it's, it's, it's been really well looked after. Maybe not bodywork wise, mechanically. Mechanically, it's sweet, been, isn't the it? engine runs beautifully, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. For, for a, that, what, 150? The original Volvo, look, it's got yeah. Volvo stand on it. 150k is it done, the car? I think so, over and that, yeah. Oh, yes, the engine's running sweet. And these bushes have lasted, we assume they're the original factory bushes, so they've lasted all of those miles. Brilliant. I mean, you can't fault Volvo for the quality of their parts. They are built to last. Well, they were then. Um, no, we can't say now. We can't don't. say now, I don't have a modern Volvo. Although I do have to say, every Volvo I've had has been very reliable. I have a Polestar. Star, Polestar. Polestar. Pol Star. If, if somebody if, wants yeah. to just send one over send for a over. test. Polestar 1, 2, yeah. don't mind, anything. Yes. But then, anyway, yeah, yeah, so like I said, we were pulling stuff apart, steering rack leaked like a twat, so <laughs> pulled all of that apart because hopefully we're going to get new end seals, put them on, put it back together and put that back in the car. Um, worst case, we're sending it back for a core charge for someone. Yeah, worst case scenario. Yeah. So, so we'll, we'll have a go at it first and if it's don't work, then we'll send it off. Could I'm waiting move? for a phone call back from Volvo as well about some bleed nipples. Nips. Nips. Rusty nips. Nips. So uh, hopefully they can find some old stock, otherwise I'll be hunting for some proper ones. Yeah. Yeah. Update later. Let's run through the cleaning process so you can see how we clean stuff. Let's do that. So let's run you through the procedures I'm using to clean this skanky stuff. It is proper skanky, isn't it? It is. So first, you need your skanky part. Yeah. Check. Then. I've got a tub full of thinners or gun wash, if you're a painter you know what gun wash is. And I've just been chucking them in, leaving them soak for a bit and then brushing off a skank, which is um, Schultz, I think. It's years Brush and years of crud. Years and years of crud and Schultz uh, and wax oils and stuff like that. And that does a great job of washing that off. And then you're left with parts that look a bit like this, cleaned off, but still have a fairly good layer of rust. So again, using the least time-consuming method, I have an electrolysis dip tank. Mind my skanky <laughs> area of the bottom back of the workshop. But there we go. Uh, that is full of Volvo parts, de-rusting without me physically de-rusting them. All I have to do, wrap a bit of wire around there, chuck it in there, stick it on, and it takes off the rush. Should I pull it out? Yes! We're using the power of electricity. Let's turn that off. Let's have a look what we got in there. Yeah. There we go, look, getting de rusted without touching. To the bench. Right, this stuff was really caked on. And now, look at it, it just, good old electrolysis. Can't go wrong. <gasps> That's a big chunky bit. Yeah, it's, it's all just, <gasps> all just, it's all just comes coming off. coming right off. So satisfying. Yeah, so once I've done, once the electrolysis has done its thing and it's ripped off all the rust, um, then I put it in the sandblasting cabinet. Blast it till they're lovely and clean. Right, with bigger parts like this axle, um, it's just man hours, you've just got to get in there dirty. 
to get right in there. That's it, I'm afraid wire brush and wire brush, elbow grease. Um, thinners or petrol will take off the disgusting chults. And then you just got to deal with the rust manually, wire brush it, uh, cure it with cure rust if you've got any cure rust. And repaint. I'm halfway through melting the crap off the petrol tank. Do you want to see that? Let's have a look at that. Mm. Well done. We got someone sleeping. Oh, I'll leave uh. Fuel tank was really thick coated in shorts. It's done a really good job of protecting it. I mean, look how nice the steel is. It's, it's brand new under there. It's brand new, unlike your scraper. <laughs> did you did you go into my toolbox find and take my scraper? So I borrowed your scraper. That was blue. It was. <laughs> um, I will allow it because. I it is. I just touched it. With my <laughs> oh, you poor thing, you. Anyway, uh, like I said, this is going to come up really clean. I'm going to clean it all off, de-rust it, cure it. Um, and then we'll wrap it up, I think. Start yeah, nice it, like, protective protect coat. Mm -hmm. We'll give it a light coat of some wax oil maybe afterwards, like transparent wax more than anything. Yeah. But once it's painted, it won't be... But the Raptor will protect oh, God, against yeah. stone chips and stuff. Yeah. So We'll get some more life out of this fuel tank yet. Oh, God, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, so, yeah, handy drain plug as well at the bottom. Mm. You know, yeah. if you ever see a 240 on the side of the road, you need some fuel, you know where to go. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, look, here we go. What a mucky pup you are. It is quite a disgusting job. Hey guys, so, I don't know if you can hear me through this. Probably not. I'll lift it up. Oh. Surprise, it's me. We're cleaning parts. This is a new method I've figured out for cleaning really disgusting dirty stuff, just use paint stripper. Paint stripper them up, leave it, drag it outside, pressure wash it, it comes out looking like the axle. Bloody spotlessly clean. These are literally the last two things I've got to sort out before painting. So let's get them outside, pressure wash them, clean them up, and then dry them out, hang everything up, and get some black on. And then all of this stuff, be nearly ready to reassemble and fit on that lovely 240. Let's do it. So, it never ceases to amaze me how bad some people's work are. Obviously in the previous scene I was cleaning up these legs ready for a Quick coat of paint, that's all. Just clean, paint, job done. Not anymore. If you look here, or here actually, you'll notice that these cups have been replaced. And the welding, do the welding, that is um, bad. It's not great welding. Obviously it's held them in place, but I'm not putting my family in this car with the welding like it is. I'll show you now. I mean, oh, gross. So we will be grinding back. I'm going to have to completely dismantle these now. I'm going to grind out all of that and re-weld that with nice weld. And on the top of it, there's a load of silicon in the top of it. What's that hiding? What's the silicon hiding? We'll find that in a second. We'll find out. So right now we're going to do a bit of work on this. And then we should be good for painting. Um, everything else is ready to go. The rear axle looks really good. Um, is every, anyone else's 240 axle diff case yellow? Because how is it? Yellow. It's, I don't know, it's just yellow. Anybody else's yellow? <laughs> the small parts are um, sandblasted and ready to paint. The petrol tank has been cleaned off and cure rusted and Curious is where it needed it, and it's ready to paint. I also took out the um, sack of lead balls that are in the um, petrol tank, rolling around in there, doing God knows what. <laughs> lead additive. Yeah, it kind of was a lead additive because you're putting lead in the petrol, but you're not 
really putting lead in the petrol. Anyway, um, so yeah, let's pull this apart. Let's clean this up, let's grind this, let's sandblast the legs, let's get everything hanging up and let's get some paint on these and call it a day. Sounds good, montage mode. Oh yeah, it's held on by that, isn't it? <laughs> Get it off in one go, that'd be brilliant. Like a big sealed thing. Come on. One go. Here we go. Now, might be right in your bathroom, but not on your suspension, guys. Grinding all done, and you can see they cleaned up fairly nicely. There was a weld here and a weld here. I think that one welding it onto some sort of collar, this cut onto some sort of collar, and then you weld the collar to the leg. Um, I tried my hardest not to dig into the leg too much with the grinding because I want to keep the strength into there. So I should be able to just run a nice new bead around both of these lips. I think I will both of them because. That one was a pretty ugly weld as well, and I think I'm going to run a bit of weld in there. Oh, scary bit. Ooh. There we have it guys, all painted up looking rather tremendous. Yes, I did paint the new parts as well, uh, mainly because they came with a few scuffs and scratches and it was just going to rust really, really fast. Tank's looking amazing. Let's zoom out a bit, you can see a bit more, oh, that's better. Tank is looking amazing. And so we're all the control arms and the front legs on the welding on the front legs looks a lot better than it was uh, yeah so everything's looking nice and shiny uh, I gave it a coat of clear over the top of some satin black to um, protect it a bit longer and there you go there's the axle all done so uh, join us next time when we put in this stuff back together that'll be fun